statements. Okay. Uh, so the MCU Denver TSEC mission statement is to support the evolving needs of MCU Denver students by advocating in their best interests to enhance the university experience and opportunities. Everyone in the room and the council agree? Yeah. Any, sure. any notes? Any abstentions? Okay, that's not ours. Uh, <laughs> beautiful. Um, let's start taking attendance. Uh, Denny Palacios, present. Naomi, present. Me, I'm here. William, present. Mike. Um, sorry, just said, um, present. Alejandro, present. Manos, present. Paul, present. Gabe Trujillo, present. Okay. I appreciate it. Matt, do you want to? Matthew Rathman, present. Beautiful. Oh, that's good. That's Nice. Okay. Everybody had a chance to take a look at the agenda. Are we okay with approving it? Um, I have a slight adjustment. It will will um, oblige me. me. Can we move um, my bill on the budget up in front to the beginning of uh, new business? Because a lot of the bills afterwards will kind of uh, require require the budget to be kind of approved. Oh, so at the very front? Yeah, very front. Yes. yes. And we are at, where do I see you? Um, we are at uh, four, so that'd be to one. I see, that works. Okay. Any? Motion, uh, does anybody else have another motion? Do any changes to the agenda? A motion to approve the agenda. I second the motion. All right. Okay, let's vote for the agenda. To be approved. Everybody who agrees says aye. 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 Any nays? Any abstentions? Mm, I abstain. I do abstain. You abstain. I abstain. I have an abstention. Okay. So, uh, group norms. We talked about this last week. Um, uh, seven minutes for discussion after a bill is uh, after a bill is being discussed. Um, I mean, sorry, after a bill or a resolution has been approved. I think that is the major one. Uh, be respectful. Okay, then let's start with the board of, what, board of community announcements and updates. Mike, what do you have for us? Have for us, who do I meet with this week? Um, I don't think I've met with anyone this week, um, but the trustees meeting is in two weeks actually. So um, I probably will not be at this meeting because the trustee meeting gets out at 12.30. Um, so I mean, I'll either be coming late to this meeting or I'm not being this meeting at all. I'll let you know. Put that out there. Uh, I know that makes up. So. Okay. Stay cap. Awesome. Okay. So stay cap. We had its first meeting. So fun. So fun. Um, one of the CU Denver reps, uh, I think his name is Mitch, um, is the chair of stay cap. I think it's Mitch. I'm not Mitchell. Mitchell, okay, yeah. Mitchell, he is now the chair of SACAB. I, I was voted into in SACAB as the ABOD rep. So I'll be sitting on the regular board of directors yes. meeting. Okay. Ooh, okay. Congratulations. Uh, so. And then, so SACAB, we're just starting up, right? So that first meeting was kind of like getting to know each other, getting to know like what some very basic goal setting of like, well, what do we want? Uh, we, uh, the three people who were there were me, Mitch, and Kristen. Um, and we just have to, uh, we talked about how we really want more unity on this campus with, within the three institutions. Um, and to really find that power that, that we have and really seeing like, like how much influence that we can have and then how much we can actually do. Like what is that capacity um, to do things? Yeah, and then let's see. Uh, I believe Kristen was voted in for, I'm trying to remember which specific, um committee it was either the sustainability committee or there was another committee that was in it and i i forgot the other committee it's another committee in there there's a lot of committee um and yeah and so basically we're just go, going to meet bi-weekly on the first and third tuesday of every month at 4 30 p.m to 5 30 p.m um and most of it will be in the standing chambers um, if any of you are welcome to come and share anything for public comment as well. Um, and yeah, that's 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 what I have. Thank you. Thanks, Gabe. Thank you. Wait, yeah, sorry, oh, I didn't mean to. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Free, do you have anything for the district community? Any updates on them? Still working on it? Yes, okay. I'm still waiting to hear from my advisors. Sounds good. Whew. Budget committee. Alejandro. Um, <clears throat> just talk about the a budget resolution for the budget of overall for TSA. Uh, Matt, PR committee. Yeah, this week we didn't get to like an official meeting. I did meet with a couple of the other committee members, um, primarily around the bills that will be presented today. Awesome. In a billy committee, Naomi and Paul. Um, I, we oh we established the date for when we're going to meet. Is it Casey or Kathy? Kathy. 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 We're gonna when we're gonna meet with her, and then um, I spoke with Mike as well about like some potential budget opportunities for um, a project that we're working with um, a business called AntFlow, and I also um, spoke with Armando and have a presentation ready for her to like check out and see, so we can maybe see about getting started on that and I will I keep forgetting I'm so sorry I will send that to you okay just yeah. if I don't send it to you by Monday let me know and I'll send it to you okay okay yeah the other half of the other half I'll say that um you know we're, we're still getting our our our, our committee started as it were you know we're finding ourselves but I'll say one thing I wanted to raise it's a new thing really. um John had an idea to produce some sort of um like look video material to, to advertise how to properly compose and recycle in association with the FCC about that, that um, idea with me this morning. I told him, hey, maybe you should be on the sustainability committee and uh, keep doing what you're doing. So I think it's a good idea. You know, part of I think part of why the compost bins are shut down last year is that they're in such of misuse. That could be incorrect. But um, I think it's a good idea. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Any? Yeah, so I could add context why the compost is shut down if you want, if you'd like. Uh, maybe later. Later, yeah, email. Yeah, mm -hmm. we can do email. Any floor announcements? I'd like to yeah. add, I was charged with finding my replacement for this um, student success launch implementation team since I'm, I volunteered. So Amanda said it's not on me to find somebody else because I can't be at these meetings. And physically, we have to be there for these meetings with these heads of departments and things and working on the pillars of success for this strategic plan. And, you know, it's a really prestigious thing I believe to be part of and if anybody else can do this I know the schedule was first given to us there's a number of Tuesdays at different times where you have to be present and attending this so is there anybody who can who is interested and can do this and I have an idea if not so I'm interested but yeah. I can't I don't want to say yes and commit can I can we talk about this offline and see we can. It's just they needed a name by three days ago. Yeah. <laughs> so we got it. We we can absolutely talk. But here's my idea. I'd like to broach with you guys anyway. If no one can commit to these Tuesdays, it's all the way through December, right? Um, I had an idea on the way here today that maybe we could talk to campus leaders who are still students um, who were on TSAC last year, like Taylor or um, James or someone else who yeah. is a student leader. Chad. He doesn't necessarily say, or Chad, doesn't say necessarily TSAC. They want a student leader. And I just thought, you know, as a runner up, that might be good. Okay. So we could give a name. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Is it just Michael in the stack? Yeah, oh, go ahead. Right. I mean, sorry. I mean, sorry, Paul. Oh, oh so sorry. sorry. I was stepping back. Go ahead. Um, I think, you know, like you're thinking there, we could probably open it to more broadly, like student leadership, like mm -hmm. there's a whole student leadership program, mm -hmm. right? Just maybe even look at there for somebody that might be interested in joining. Mm -hmm. um, we are a little bit of yeah. or at least yeah, many yeah. of us are. I know I am. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd be. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, would you all, um, who else did want to say Is something? Is that never anybody else? No? No. So, Will, we can talk after, but how would you feel, and I don't know how process would be about this for me approaching our immediate past membership to ask them if that's okay if will cannot commit to this what do you think of that is that okay for me to do well by my view that's student voice right okay. and and i think that when it comes to that information coming back to us and the decisions being made around yeah. what the student government does then we need to like, drop back on just participating but um i think it'd be good okay uh, i'd like to add to that um i think that's a great idea but 
I think we should vote on who it is for sure. Okay. But that's 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 my two small. So I work with urban leadership. That's really my job in CMI. And um, there's a lot of leaders in that program. Um, we get absolutely like, hey, there's opportunity for I don't know, to serve on a board with a bunch of university leaders mm -hmm. affects some change. I can definitely send this one out. Um, I think I have the email somewhere, which I'm going to be sending it to me, so I can maybe like look at it again. Sure, uh, sure. I got a lot of emails, uh, okay. but uh, that could be an option as well. So so here's here's like a steps kind of thing that maybe y'all would agree with. I'll talk to Will and see what his interest is. Yeah. Secondly, maybe I then broach with Dr. Simpkins, our ideas for things as another student leader, because no one on this active council can serve if Will cannot. And then I'll, based on his feedback, I'll talk with Mike yeah. and then either with that or approach three of our former. How's that? Yeah. Just to give somebody this and week. Potentially vote on it. I have fallen to stock. Give me a second. Sorry. This is last thing I want to say. Sorry. Um, I think both the urban leadership school. And uh, whoever uh, Dr. Simpkins would suggest, yeah. Some really okay. Um, well, you know, I don't have really a thing on voting. Yeah. Well, the only thing about the voting is they need a name, and yeah. so I don't know well, after this yeah. meeting. No, you're right. I don't know. Sorry, yeah. I don't think about that. We could push it into the week. I like this, and I'm sure there will be students that were looking for opportunities to get involved. Sure. With this app. It's a great Let's thing to put on your resume. Let's Help give them those opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep us on the loop. Absolutely. Okay, beautiful. We'll talk after this. Yes, Ross. Sounds great. Okay. Thanks, everybody. On our um, member. Faculty, staff, senate. Do you have anything, John, about the faculty, staff, senate? Wait, are we? Okay. So. I will. Yes. I will. Yes, I will have that connection email with that person. She's okay. at the end of the day. I'll, I'll just send an email and I'll see you. Wait, hold on. I thought we were still on open floor. And oh, you, so you I have just, a floor? Yeah, I just had Go something ahead. to say. Um, I had a suggestion for today, given the uh, distraught emails that we have been receiving in regard, in regard to Black Era trying to just obtain a space today. I offered to stay today after the meeting from 2.30 to 3.30 to work with X and whatever members of Black Era that are currently present at that time to work on their needs and would like for whoever could else stay with me to establish our end of it and what we would need for from them or just what we need to make this happen for their open house. Because I think really that's one of the bigger things right now. And I don't think that it's an issue for us to have it there. We just need to make sure that we can have someone present for their open house because obviously only we can get in and out of that building, which means that we are in, I'm sorry, in and out of that room. So we would have to stay there. Um, so I am going to stay to work to see what it would take to get that to happen in the time frame that we need. So if y'all have the opportunity to stay after, that's great. If not, totally understandable. And whatever notes that I take, I will bring back to you all. And hopefully we can get an answer to them before I'm hoping by Wednesday. I don't know when their open house is, but I'm hoping by Wednesday would give them enough time, but also would be part of the discussion that I have with them today after this meeting as well. Just because I think that it would be just, it's an overall peacemaking opportunity um, and to provide a safe space for um, this group of individuals in this organization that has experienced trauma, not just from our past members, but from the university as well. So um, I'm just trying to build a bridge here. So whoever wants to help me, <laughs> Please stay. If not, no worries. Like I said, I will forward everything on to everyone. To I don't know when open house is for them, but I'll discuss that today as well with them. Okay. And the stack, I have Will, I have Mike, and then I have John. Okay, I and have Gabe. I have Will, I have Mike, and I have Gabe. That's the stack. Alrighty, good thing I worked in construction. Um, <laughs> from what time to what time? Um, just today from I have uh, another meeting about some financial aid stuff from somebody else. Um, amongst the other thing we talked about mm -hmm. last week. So uh, from two thirty to about like three twenty today. Okay. Um, is what I'll have. I think I can stay for that. Though. Okay, yeah, and you don't have to stay. Like, it's, like you guys also have to stay the whole time. Just like what you have to like help me look on right. what T. I really just want y'all there to help me figure out what TSAC needs mm -hmm. to make sure that we're abiding by our own rules and that we're providing the space that is, I guess, within our legality and our power and things like that. So appreciate the, any efforts. Mike, I'll make this quick. Um, I cannot stay. I have a, I have an appointment afterwards, but mm -hmm. um, I can send you some things that I would want for like so like stuff we talked about earlier like. Um, not not a leasing agreement, but like a liability agreement, right, right, right. stuff like that for yeah. like, hey, you can use your office. These terms, I'll send you some terms that I would feel better if we're gonna have people in our office. Mm -hmm. 
with them accepting and signing these terms. Right. So I can, I'll send this to you. Are you gonna, can, I, can I have you after? Absolutely. Gabe? Yeah, man. Okay, are you done? Yes. Gabe? Mine, mine is a separate open floor announcement. Um, so if you want to finish this first, yeah. Mine takes just a little while. Okay. Well, I wanted to ask Naomi, are you a member of the podcast? No. Okay, you're not. not I didn't much. know if you were on that in that group. That would make no. things easier. So no, 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 but hopefully we'll that. have, uh, I'm hoping X will be here and then maybe one or two other members, I'm okay. hoping, but uh, I'm not really sure. But right now I'm just working directly with X since he's the president. Thanks. Yeah. Anybody else? Do you have a public comment or is it about in this? One more. One more. Oh, different, okay. different announcement. Yeah, okay. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Ted, I can take care of it. I forgot to get the 20 thing. Um, we're going to have some of our secret members me with somebody from finance from Big Head. Mm. Um, so if you all have any questions, please send them to me in person. Um, and we can, you know, get like a list together from all some schools and ask away to the finance people. Thank you. Thanks, Ted. Oh. Um, uh, you know, I wanted to raise the issue of the RTD passes now costing students again. Um, this is a significant cost to students every month. Um, and we're still in a horrible period of stagflation, you know, that inflation stagnation period mm -hmm. that we're dealing with, that horrible bubble bind that some of our students have themselves in. Um, and we need to look at the transition between the free passes and what we have now and what was the reasoning, right? Mm -hmm. Did somebody look at the numbers and say, oh, looks like our students can all of a sudden afford an extra $140 each month? Um, and whether or not that's happened, I want to find out if that was like a data-based decision or if this was like a money-based decision, because I it's um, it's impacting a lot of students, and I've, I've heard about it from several of them. I just want to raise it on people's radar, you know. Um, parking prices, that's it. Um, but now, a, a previous existing cost for all of last year's return. Oh, yeah. Bless you. I'm going to put myself in the stack. Mm -hmm. uh, given that these are bus passes and public transport, I think this would be a really good issue for the sustainability community to look at. I agree. Mm -hmm. But if you want to get a head start on that, and then I will join you on that. Just give me some structure. I'll just some information like, request. Please. Bill, you guys will be have like an informed procedure. Awesome. Thank you. Any more open floor? <laughs> okay, may I? I'm going to move in to uh, faculty and staff tenants. I will give you that contact by the end of today. Um, I do have a lot. We do have a lot going on. Uh, given the academic policy. Um, there are some holes in the academic policy because we are a very young institution. It's been five years. Uh, things are still getting turned in and turned around. Um, the academic policy committee is looking at different models of how to develop curriculum. Um, so they, they're working on that. The Dr. Uh, Jenny Allert, which is the chair, she specializes on model changing and curriculum changing. So she's bringing this into the table and that these people are really trying to look, see how like curriculums can look for both undergrad and grad students. Um, there has been, I, I don't know if this was an issue for you guys this semester, but there was this participation policy uh, that you had to turn in some type of work into your classes, otherwise you would be dropped out of the class. Uh, and that was like just dropped on us uh, students. Like, there was no explanation. Um, um, so this does, it's in students, they, they're about to send that happen and how we can make students aware and why that's a thing. And then I think the most important thing that we talked about was that 40 Oprah division requirements. We need 40 Oprah division requirements to graduate as undergrads, uh, but our classes are three credits each. So at the end, it sums up to 42. Um, so they're looking, and this is gonna take a while. This is just an update. They're looking into maybe also changing that model. So maybe like our credits are four, like our classes are four credits, um, or to change the number of required credits. But just so you know, like there's some policy coming up with your majors, those of you that are staying for two or more years, uh, or like how this gets settled. Um, and I think that's it. Oh, one more thing before before yes, just, just give me one sec. So before I, I know last time we talked about the look ahead policy about like the D minus and like counting towards credit. Um, I'm going to remove that out of the equation because 
there are some resolutions that are coming that I think would work better. But I will have more details on that next week. And I think we can really keep our star regarding academic policy. Okay, open the floor to questions, Hunter. Anyone? Paul and then Gabe. I want to share the, uh, the attendance thing that's, that's dropped up. Apparently, it's been a, some sort of funding or federal or state thing that's come down and, and uh, restrictions of financial aid, I think. That's a big point. Yes. I've also been warned um, that it will have um, the, like bad effects for um, students who just enrolled the classes to receive certain like, benefits. Like it, it was like a kind of, I think, out of pressure describing like a situation where like a single mother might apply for a class and not actually take it to get childcare. Um, and that, like, that situation is now threatened by this policy change. Mm -hmm. yeah. They know me on that, Perfect. so I can bring it into the next meeting on Wednesday, please. Yeah, I was told to warn my other classmates about it, but I think that period has since passed and stuff. I, I, I would like, like, a, a written policy on why that's happening. So would you just email sure. me so I can have them email me that, that yeah. we'll have that in writing. Yeah. Um, okay. Awesome. So what are we thinking of the curriculum and all that? Do you know if there's any talks about um, using more OER, open open educational resources? Um, because I know that, that like, like textbooks, yeah. you know, are very expensive. Yes. Yeah. And I know that there's like a lot of classes, especially uh, like in the Spanish department and stuff, or in the like, tech department as well, who are using OER. Um, so I'm wondering if that's going to like continue and get even more university wide, because I think we'll benefit a lot more of our students. Um, and I think. It, if they're already thinking like the curriculum in a way, this, this would be like a really great time to really see if they can incorporate those open access, open education modes. I will bring it up. So for next reading, just to make sure. Oh, go ahead. Can you please keep me in the loop? Yeah. Of course. No, I know I will keep you on the loop as soon as I get. So just to make sure that we're transparent, I am going to be asking about open access education, and then I'm going to be asking about like credit requirements for child care. Anybody else? No? Awesome. Beautiful. <laughs> um, oh, Dean of Council. All right. So I have uh, somewhat of an um, interesting update. So I reached out to uh, Dean Tackett about like, getting connected with the group. And I was sent to the first chairs and directors meeting of the academic year. Now, this is the very same uh, group I'm supposed to be sitting on. Uh, if, if not, you may need to think where the Dean's Council is. But is there a mistake here? So, Dr. Barone, you may be context. Yeah. Dr. Retrum, um, me and her had a lovely conversation at the President's Cabinet meeting. And I know this because I went to the Dean Council's meeting last year. Taylor advised one of us to go. You remember that? Yeah. Period, right? I believe we're allowed to sit in on that, are we? I know we're not a voting member, of course, because we're not that, but we got to go, right? I think this is less an instance of not us, like us not being permitted to sit in and more. Uh, you know, not very clear on what I, you know, you have to get about. Uh, I said, I'm like, yeah. I, I told there was some sort of department chairs or dean's council meetings. Yeah. Yeah. And he sends back, he's like, oh, well, do you mean this group? And I said, oh, that sounds like it. Yeah. That yeah. seems to be what has happened. So yeah. we'll probably have to get our wires uncrossed and back at it. Although I do have a nice, uh, lengthy update on some of that department head uh, stuff that maybe we was talking about a little earlier. So yeah. my apologies, Dave. I'll submit it as written, though. That way we don't take a chance. It gets pretty lengthy and gets into the um, nitty gritty of uh, the task force on effective interaction and then issues that are put on watch for the public sort of, and just other things. Is this submitted in India? Oh, it will. It will. I just have it in a doc here. I'll send it in chat now. Thank you. Yeah. Dr. Brown. Can I just clarify then? So is it the Dean Council or the the Council of Chairs and Directors. I believe it's the latter. The latter, I believe it's the latter. The latter is the one I went to. The first one is the one I think I was supposed to go to. The Dean Council. Yeah. And why did you reach out to Dean Tackett? Because I didn't have any email about, about it. I wanted to follow up on my previous assignment. Okay. Um. So I, I wondered if it could yeah. have the name Dean in it. Yeah. That's why you thought. Yeah, that's why, it's, it's, I, I, that's why I was just yeah, trying to email the Dean I talked to. Right. Way. But it's the academic yeah. dean, if not the student. Oh side of the house so it's very different so um if you're not in the right group so i've been communicating with jessica retro who leads the president to yeah. who leads that group but if that's the wrong group then we need to get you connected to the hey. right one and it's not going to be through taylor let me facilitate hey. that because it got very confusing really fast yeah we'll do that <laughs> i don't think this is a fatal error no 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 that, what the information contained from this meeting was useful but uh i appreciate a little grace 
with this first committee assignment, this was very first clearly. It's my first time in it. So we're sure. Thank, thank you all. Anyone? All set. Will try institutional leaders committee. Um for our meeting on Wednesday, we talked about EVT machines being a possibility on campus. Um but we're still discussing like what we could do about that or up with that or, you know, still on like talking phase. Other than that, I'm trying to think. So I did bring up the tabling with like the uh, join tabling with the other schools for future events, SGA, TSAC events. And they're very receptive to that. Other than that, I have nothing else. Anyone have any questions for them? But EBT you mean oh, snap, you snap, right? Like, yeah, like, okay, that. cool. That's part of it. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Beautiful. Right. Um, Dr. Brown, do you have any updates for us? Uh, no, one of them is going to be around that and just getting some clarification around what committee that we're selecting so for, and I will figure that out off offline. Yep. Um, the other one is just a reminder about Fall Fest, which is coming up in two weeks. Um, okay. So just wanting to make sure that there is representation there and um, I, I know that y'all have been talking about it, just for the reminder, it's coming up to for them anything. Um, and then um, just letting you all know, I will not be here next Friday because my son is getting married. So congratulations. <laughs> well, to, yes, to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so I am going to be the park next Friday um, and Saturday. So I will not be here, awesome. but I wanted to let you all know why. <laughs> it's wonderful. Okay. Awesome. Um, we have 15 minutes into a public comment, so I'm going okay. to move forward with bills for funding for support uh, in Constitution Day. Uh, oh, no, 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 we're moving. Um, my apologies. Yes. We're going to talk about the, the budget. I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, also public comments in one minute. It's from one to one. Oh, it's one from one third. Yeah. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. One third. Okay, we have eight minutes. But if no one's doing public comment, then I can go ahead with this. Okay. Well, yeah. We can, yeah, we can move forward until someone speaks up for public comment. Correct. Okay. Yeah, they have to let us know. Okay. So. Well, do we have public comment? Is there anyone online? Anyone online? Nope. Okay. Sarah Martin, would you, yeah, would you like to start and then we'll have someone? Sure. So Alex and I both uh, wrote this. He's going to read the first portion and then I will read the second portion. So okay. um, give, awesome let's time. give our friend, friend Ken, Kenny a minute. Oh, You're yes. good? Thank you, Kenny. Sorry. All right. So, yeah, just a resolution for the TSEC budget. Um, the Basically, the abstract is going to be uh, the Student Advocacy Council was established three years ago with our formal, formal budgeting process. This resolution <laughs> introduces a new tradition aligning with student government practices nationwide to enable student government TSAC to organize and allocate funds transparently for the betterment of the Metropolitan State University of Denver student body. Whereas one with the referen referendum and a communal document Replacing the MSU Denver Constitution, it was evident that the communal document was incomplete and adequate, inadequate for governing MSU Denver students. Uh, last year, the General Council unanimously voted to abolish the communal document and replace it with the new student government TSAC Constitution, providing a proper governance structure. This resolution aims to expand the budget and empower standing committee chairs to effectively utilize allocated funds. So then we'll do therefore here back to the resolve. The following funds will be created, allotted, assigned, and categorized. And this is coming straight from our budget. Um, it's on there too, but read it. So um, this is from our constitution. The green purchasing fund um, shall be allocated to, um, $10,000 and it'll be managed by the uh, student government uh, sustainability chairs in this case. They would be in charge of allocating the budget and it will be recorded by the budget chair as well. Um, this one is to be used for green purchasing student organization agreements. So that was an agreement that was passed two years ago by Taylor um, Lucas. Um, and then this one will also be used for any sustainability projects brought forth by the Sustainability Committee. 
Um, and then the third reminder here is all events must be approved by the general counsel before um, it could be spent on that. The second fund that we're going to be creating is um, the Student Organizations Fund, which is already in creation, but this is just putting it back on the map for everyone. Um, and this shall be managed by the budget chair. Um, this fund is exclusively used for student orgs and under the rules established in the student allocation request form that is currently on our website. So um, there's a long form there. You can hit the hyperlink if you want to read it more. Um, the PR events fund shall be allocated $30,000 and to be managed by the public relations chair and recorded by the budget chair. These funds shall be used exclusively for student government um, events, raffles, promotional materials, and outreach. Um, and then all events must be approved by the general counsel with Thank raffles, you. promotional material, outreach being approved by the public relations committee. Uh, the budget committee budget, this will be allocated $5,000 and be managed by the budget chair. Um, this fund will shall follow the rules established by a resolution called a resolution to provide budget committee with power to make small fiscal allocations, which was passed last year with two notable um, differences. The fund shall be increased from $2,500 to $5,000 and the threshold for which packages can be allocated and approved by the budget committee will be raised from $250 to $500. Mm -hmm. uh, the student government staffing fund shall be created and allocated um, $12,000. This is to be managed by the advisor and recorded by the budget chair. This is how we pay our staff. Um, uh, this fund is exclusively for the payment of the TSAC executive assistance. The executive assistant shall be paid $18 an hour and will be allotted 20 hours a work week. If minimum wage were to exceed $18 an hour, then the minimum wage um, sets the new wages for the executive assistant. So minimum wage trumps eight, this $18 an hour um, or $8. So because I know it's going up in January, that's why. The office fund shall be allocated $10,000 and this should be managed by the TSAC budget chair with recommendations from the um, executive assistant, the office manager. Um, this fund shall be used for office renovation projects and supplies with the goal of making the office more appealing to the student body. Um, the rainy day fund shall be allocated an amount of $9,000. This fund shall be managed and recorded by the budget chair. This fund shall is a last resort fund um, and shall not be used unless approved by a two thirds majority of the council. It's basically the smashing of the piggy bank if we need it. Um, and the last fund here is leadership development fund. This should be allocated $5,000. This fund shall be managed by the TSAC general council and the SG TSAC advisors. This fund shall be used for leadership development activities such as conferences, team building, and materials associated with these events. Scrolling down, that's a visual aid of everything I have just said to y'all. Um, hereby, for the resolved, um, here's kind of some uh, insurances. So, um, quarterly financial reports. SGT SAC committee chairs are required to submit quarterly financial reports to the budget chair and the general council. This ensures the ongoing oversight and transparency. Um, the following dates determine the quarters. So the first quarter ends uh, the 31st of October. Um, the second quarter is December 21st. March 29th is the third quarter, and May 10th is the last quarter. Um, committee allot allotted budgets must have at least two members, um, two who are not the chairs, to be able to access the budget. So the reasoning behind this is you need at least two to three members to vote on whether to approve of like outreach for the PR committee or other things like that. So um, that's there as well. Um, all budget uses usage must be announced by the weekly SGT SEC meeting by committee chairs. So if you spend the budget, you need it. Let the council know the next meeting. Um, in previous TSAC expenditures before passing this resolution shall be categorized as uncategorized spending and will not deduct from the present budget. So everything we spent already will just be put under kind of a, Is we it? didn't, yeah. No, she's. Oh, sorry. Um, it'll be put under a different fund or a, and the bill will go forward as is. Um, so that was really confusing what I just said. And then five, any increase to the budget category must be justified by the committee chair and approved by the council. If a project, I don't know why that's there. Um, slash six, I don't know why that left it in there. Um, and then all funding requests must receive, must be received final approval from the SGT SAC advisor. So that is my bill. And um, for I let questions and stuff, um, they say it's been endorsed by Max, by Gabe, by Denny, by Naomi, by Will, and by Reed. Will it, before we yeah. continue this, I think we have people in the um, X is on his way up, I think. And then I think we have people in the uh, the thing. I just want to make sure that they could like speak up. So Tristan, I saw that you joined. I just want to make sure you didn't have anything to say since we are in public comment. Well, we finish this business first, don't we? No, they, so oh, my, they my business to... resumes at 10 or one fifteen. so. Thank you for reading that. Yes, so but once one fifteen hits, public comment period is over and we're moving on. Does anyone? I have questions, but I guess yeah. we don't have so. They're waiting. Okay. So does Tristan have a book? Oh, he's checking. I see. Hey, 
just have one thing I forgot to say if there's no way for comment yet that I forgot to say. Is Hold on, it's in the. Oh, okay. Mr. Speaker, I, I, comments, but he's present in person. I was going to state that as public comment was coming up. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Um, as public, so just as long as he gets here before 115, we can um, assist in that. Um, if he gets here before 115, uh, I mean, I'll make a motion that, to at least let him say his piece because I understand we're students and everything and all that. So, um, yeah, I don't have my phone on me, so it's hard to text him right now. Dr. Rondi, why? Yeah, I just wanted to give a quick update that I didn't think about until after. Um, I uh, met with our new associate director for Met Media this week, Chris uh, DeRocchi, who started on Tuesday. So we're really excited to meet someone in that position. And um, I thought it would be a good idea to invite him to come and meet you all here at TSAC because we have a pretty close relationship with Met Media, I think. And they're often involved or covering um, TSAC. Um, activities. So um, he wanted to come and meet you all. And then I also wanted, I thought it would be a good idea to also invite Tim Carroll, who's the director of our media and media relations and strategy, and have them both come at the same time and just talk about your relationship with the media. We've done this in previous years, and I think it's important just in terms of like you understanding your um, roles and responsibilities and how to respond to I think is really important. So I just want to let you know that is coming. I copied in Kenny to see when there's time on the agenda, but I think it's a really important yeah. conversation for us to have at the front end before the spiral out of control. Hello, how are you doing? Thank you so much. All right. Let's grant five minutes of public comment. Thank you. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Anton Deshaun Johnson. My name, also known as X, I'm the founder and president of Black Era. Part of the reason why I'm here today is I just wanted to express again some discontentment, but also some alarming information regarding my experience personally as a student and a student leader and as a founder of um, Black Yara Student Organization. Last week, I came to you all expressing that the relationship between my organization and this council um, needs to be examined, especially be concerning that our um, materials being missing out of the Student Advocacy Council. I ended up learning and discovering that an administrator by the name of Dr. Tan Nguyen okayed the permission of the throwing away of our materials um, in the in-between time of this council not being able to contact us. What's interesting about this situation is um, I went to Tan personally around the circumstance of our materials being missing. Um, and I was informed by um, Dianis Walls, who is the office manager and operations manager for CMEI, that she had contacted TSAC about the missing items um, and that you, someone had advised, she said that she couldn't disclose who, um, that they were uncertain. And so for me, um, as a student leader, um, in, in preparation for our welcome week, when we didn't have our materials and how that uniquely positioned us to not hit the ground running and to know and to be disclosed, um, by a student um, who is a part of the council that the approval of that notice was set to be by Tan and then also to her sentiments to say that she would deal with it later, she lied to me. This information was documented via email. This information is, uh, I have records of that information now. And so for me as a student leader, if there's a breach in trust between student leaders in the administration, but also too, there's a coloring of who I am and who my character is when I have worked extremely hard um, to me, inform me, um, this sentiment and this information that was brought to me by a student leader who is also in this work um, together helped me to understand that the things that I'm experiencing are not imaginary. Um, and also to, um, to that student leader's point, um, and thank you, um, Naomi. Thank you, Naomi, for um, identifying that there was a coloring of 
who she saw me to be based upon her experiences um, of what she heard about me prior to being on this council. I think it's very unfortunate for me to go to our administration and ask, thank you for the two minutes. Um, what happened to our materials? I think it's unfortunate as well when our university um, doesn't have a current space for student organizations. And as you all know, those banners that I had and the materials that I had took a lot of time to create, a lot of time to print, and it also took away from the existing fees for students. Um, in particular, me having to repurchase these things. Now, granted, um, the expense item was made against CMEI's budget, but the issue is, is that when I brought the fact that our stuff was missing and didn't know where it went and understanding that student organizations are already using that space, to me, it was just like a slap in the face. And it felt um, intentional. And it also, for me, it's just another coloring of the things that I have experienced as a student leader. I see my team and we are working intentionally and hard to get the word out and notice out regarding events and the things that we're providing and we are growing by leaps and bounds. We're over 107 members as of today, but I think this one instance is just one of the many that I have experienced as a student leader with our administration. And I am not going to label what that is. All I'm going to say is a lie is a lie and truth is true. And if you can intentionally lie to my face and cover up your lie and not disclose fully um, the circumstance in the situation of what this council was authorized to do with our materials in lieu of us as student organizations not having space. It's troubling. Um, it's disheartening. It feels intentional. But the thing that I've learned with doing my healing work is that even though something can feel like it's against you, the truth is, is that the only way you can overcome these obstacles that feel very oppressive in nature, specifically from our administration, is to do the work. So I have tapped into our counseling center and to other student leaders who truly know who I am. And I encourage this council to get to know me for themselves and also to, to honor their word to Black Era moving forward. Thank you. Um, before you got there, um, I went ahead and spoke with our media. Two, two volunteers are going to stay with me after to the bottom of you and whoever else is online as well. If it's okay with you, I prefer to keep it recorded so people understand that like we are trying to do our due diligence in this yes. processing and reckoning it, of course. And then also, um, so we're going to stay till our next meeting, of course. Um, and he gave, uh, Mike gave us just a list of things to just like for like waivers and stuff to make sure like you guys can go over it as well, just to like see how you feel about that. Okay. Um, and so we're going to do that with you guys today as well to make sure that we can make it happen for you guys to have your open house in the TSOC office as well for that day. So just let us know. And then also for the council to know, for this incident we talked about with Tom, this happened with the previous council. So the only people who were involved in that in this particular council that's here today is Mike and I. And I say that because Mike and I had the go ahead from Ton to remove that shit from our office. I'm sorry, not shit, that stuff from our office. Excuse me, it's so tired. Um, from that, those materials from our office. And um, so that's really our only participation in that. Otherwise, you guys really had nothing to do with that because you guys weren't even in TSAC. But this is just like, an understanding of why these bridges we have burnt and this is why we need to rebuild them and it's on us now to do it unfortunately but we have those consequences taken over from the past TSAC members so we have to do what we can and I think that we're doing the best that we can for what, what we've been dealt with at the time and I appreciate X here being able to help us all stay accountable and also ourselves for holding ourselves accountable for this as well Jenny stepping up and creating meetings Matt as well I know you can't see me pointing at you but I'm pointing at you um, to also take uh, the time out to try to talk to X as well during this time. So your efforts are seen. We'll see you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. okay. Let's restore. Let's restore your business. Uh, okay. We have um um. I'll just. Okay. I'll just second. Thank you. Um. Okay. We you finished reading the bill. Yes. You questions. Have questions. Sir. Bill. Yeah. Questions. Of course. Go ahead. Am I allowed to, I don't know process, you know, a friendly amendment to offer? Sure. Friendly, okay. I think it would be really nice because I think the budget makes sound sense. You know, I would love to add in the event fund under 3A, we could add a sentence that might include, and we can discuss this, the committee is amenable to receiving proposals for joint events with TSAC and various student organizations mm -hmm. should opportunities arise for such, which will require approval by the 
approval by the full council. Yeah, I love that. So let me, let me see it, digest it back to you. I'm going to start a timer with seven minutes. If we cannot fix in seven minutes, it will be taken. Perfect. Okay. Is this for just that question? No, it's the whole it's debate. Discussion. The whole discussion is seven minutes. Around the whole resolution? Around yeah. the whole resolution. Okay, can I mean there because I have a separate friendly amendment that I want to offer that's different. Of course. Also, you and I, since we wrote it, we have to grant the plan. Okay. So then I'll hold back. Okay. You're going to hold back a comment? So in the stack, I have Reed, and then I have you. I think I was in the stack after you. I'm so sorry, I didn't see you. Let's have Kristen, and then you already spoke, so we'll do. Um, I don't mind adding that at all, actually. You know what? It, it'd be amenable to um, working with other students. I don't think we necessarily need anything in that, but I think that's easy enough. All, all events, if we're going to work with like transitionally, all events should be brought to the council for that matter. So it doesn't matter if it's transitional or our events. So I, I think it's, it sounds nice to say, you yeah. know, some things may be in partnership with other student organizations rather than it just seeming like we're doing the campus events and we have a big budget for that at the end. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Sounds okay. good. What do you think? Um, I mean, honestly, I definitely don't think it would be a bad idea to have it on there just to have a little more clarification and stuff like that. Just to avoid like future questions and stuff like I that. I said, we're going to like draft something in there real quick because he has the new version. Sounds like a yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We accept that. We okay. Accept. Okay. okay. Um, Oh. Can I put you after? Because I had Mike, I had Kristen, and then I had oh, Paul. Yeah. I'm on the stack. It's Kristen. Oh, no, Paul, sorry. Maybe. Kristen, Paul, and then you. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I just, as um, clarification, you had it. Um, under the section for the ticket fee assistance, it says $18 an hour. I know for SACAB specifically, when we talked about this at our meeting, we matched Denver's minimum wage, which is 1829 so I just want to confirm that Kenny is currently getting paid 1825. I believe that doesn't change since January. I believe okay. the, so. He's, he's current minimum wage is 1740 something, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, but once minimum wage gets passed, or even if so, if, if that is currently, then then he'll get paid that. Okay. So, yeah. I just want to clarify. Thank you, Kristen. And then I have you. No, Paul and Gabe. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, can, can you scroll all the way down, Kenny, at the very bottom? I have. I'm an operative from him, but do you think it's so my issue with the very last, all funding requests must receive the final approval from the SEC advisor. I love our advisors, right? Mm -hmm. But I think what we're doing is we're getting we're giving veto power to someone outside the schools. Mm -hmm. um, now, I think they should have something like that. I think all funding requests must receive final approval from either the TSEC advisors or the co-chairs. Add the student voice back in there because that just gives me the second that you know Wait. the our decision making just leaves our. But these are which would be ill made and illized. Um, say, say for example, we all had a really, really good idea. We will not get that. Um, right. Just a hypothetical. I think we, should, as students, should be able to advance those ideas. Like, you know, even if our advisors disagree. Though, I think we should listen to what they have to say, and they should, we should still have this process of final approval. But we should add some student board back. Wait, point of clarification. Um, so you're saying that they want, um, so if, if students are asking for um, us to sponsor or get sponsor, I guess, a budget that is not. Okay. Nothing like that. This is just. Point of order. I think Dr. Varon has some insight on what response. Our, our response, and this, it might be like a technical, yeah. like due process thing. Is it? Is it? Yeah. Okay. I would say that a lot of the times when we interject or let's say something isn't permissible it's usually around policy or process at the university not because we just have to, we might advise that that's we don't think that's a great idea to buy Patagonia jackets but if you decide to <laughs> yeah. use it right like we can't stop you but I think a lot of times it might be because we see red flags with accounting or you know business services or whatever around contracts or different things like that so I just want to interject there that that is why I think that's important can I address that so I accept all of this. We should still keep our eyes open and our ears open for advisors when they raise those policy tips. Like I, I, I'm not suggesting we ignore that for railroad when it comes to making these kind of decisions. I just think that you know, we got to keep in mind that you know we have a responsibility as student counselors to. Can we hear? Can we hear Gabe? And he had suggested friendly amendments. I just want to tweak it a little bit. Okay. Because we don't know. I mean, we can choose to accept tweak it. it maybe. Well. So what I'd say here is maybe how about the general counsel? If 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 they say no, bring to the general counsel for about two thirds vote or something like that. I think that's fair. Okay. Can we do that? Can we say SEC advisor or general counsel? If mm -hmm. to not or like if uh, period. 
<laughs> if advisor denies, um, it could be brought to the general counsel for override. I think that. Yeah, I yeah, like, I like that. that. You all don't think that language is overly complicated? No. As opposed to the adding the or? No. Okay. I'm okay with it. Do it. So do you? Yeah, sure. I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. 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 Dave. Awesome. So it's a good question. So when it comes to like, partnership events that we can do student work, will that come out of the student work fund or will that come out of the event fund? Mm. Okay, sorry. I was making sure I was correct. Listen. Very good. So with with partnerships with student orgs, will that money come from the student work fund or from the okay. event fund? So if it's if it's their event, it comes from the student work fund. Because this is us just giving money for them from their event. We don't have to do anything. If it's our events or sponsored by our events, I mean it's our fund. We so if we our name's attached to it, then we're gonna spend our money on it. And because we have a bigger budget than most of ours do. So that's that be the distinction. Mm, for good. So point of clarification. So like for instance, the powwow, since we donated to the powwow, mm -hmm. um, you guys were available or able to table there, but like um it wasn't your event, so you didn't table there. How to explain it? Like explain that a little bit better. So what it, so from the powwow. We weren't um that we were sponsor it wasn't our events it mm -hmm. was not an sgt's like sanctioned or not sanctioned but like a event we just chose to you guys gave us a table in like return so gotcha. that would have been more of a student org or like that would have been that, that that's a good that's a different that's a different that's a whole different thing that was a okay. donation that wasn't like a events thing or anything okay so cool, yeah cool. all right any okay. questions concerns any other questions concerns i'm well uh, just one last thing i'd like to raise it as a concern though i know i think i really struggled with that might be the minority on it i do not think the student government should have a bank for a large excess of funds i think we should use the funds that we've been given to accomplish the task and the mission of the government on mission statement the idea that we're going to sit on nine thousand dollars to me is like wonderful but, clarification though isn't this just for this particular semester term this is for this is this is with fiscal this is for our this is our budget for the year for the fee. okay i think there's a lot of good thousand dollars for students but i just hate to sit on it i just want to respond to that while i i mm -hmm. hear what you're saying and i don't disagree i also think it is important to have funding available for unexpected mm -hmm. expenses or minimum wage increases or potential stipend increases the following year or if enrollment tanks again and your funding goes down having at least some kind of a cushion i think can help Set you up in a positive way but, or set the incoming council for the following year in a positive way versus in the past where we've spent the entire budget like for stipend um and it really <laughs> caused a lot of i think it, it, it did not set folks up well this year because of spending all of the board yeah, so i just want to throw that out there you all do what you want but that's just something i would strongly recommend to think about given all of the respects on the table. Discussion time is closed. Mm -hmm. I motion to vote. If it doesn't second. pass, then we'll, we'll, we'll re discuss. We'll, we'll, we'll re revisit and we'll it, yeah. bring it back next week. Yes. Okay, second. Awesome. This is a big vote, guys. Yes. I did. I seconded it. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will start with you and we'll go around. Hi. 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 Oh, oh, hi. Hi. Matt. Hi. I just need to eat. And quiet. beautiful. And we passed our first resolution of the year. Oh. Oh, okay. I am so well, proud of all of you. You have no idea. Well, it took us three weeks, but we got there. <laughs> and they forgot there. This is from last year. I have a my my things pass unanimously every time. So <laughs> okay. the still doesn't. Okay, okay, okay. We'll take a walk. Okay. Just putting up there. We do have a guest informing. That's cool. Uh, so we can oh. take a party break. Mm -hmm. uh, no, we're not taking. Like four minutes. Of time. <laughs> you taking this? Okay, okay. Go ahead. Well, oh. our guest <laughs> is here, <laughs> so <laughs> you're you party break. <laughs> okay. Hi. Yeah, we call. I will I will give you the oh no it's already given oh, okay. okay yeah we can all just sit like that there we go that one. um hi everyone for those that don't know me my name is Diane you she her pronouns I'm the director of campus recreation I've been here for almost six years October 16th will be my six year anniversary of working at Metro um, and the reason I wanted to join this meeting today is to see how we could collaborate on getting the name out there, both Campus Recreation and TSAC. 
I feel like because of the commuter campus and just the culture that we already have, a lot of folks don't know that both of us exist. So how can we, which is, I'm seeing head nod, so hopefully that's the right assumption. How can we help each other out to promote each other's events? So like if you guys have events coming up, we're more than happy to cross promote that on our social media channels. Um, similarly, we have a rec fest every fall. Um, so we would love for you guys to be there and be a partner at the table. Um, a lot of the rec fest partners are about well-being and I think shared governance is another opportunity for students' well-being. So getting your name out there that way would be helpful. We had over 500 students attend over the two-day events, three hours a day. So if you all are interested in tabling and getting your name out there, that would be a good opportunity. And, and or we could think of other ways that we could collaborate on an upcoming event. I know you were talking about budget earlier. We also have a decent sized budget. So maybe we could do something specific that is a collaboration between our two organizations. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> May I? Um, I'm going to email you this week. Yeah. And then let's come up with something. I know we have presentation day coming up. Um, you know, do you guys want to come to that and yeah. like stay for a bit? Like, I don't see why that would. We'll we'll make a constitution. Okay, sure. <laughs> why don't we just put those two together? Why don't you guys just come table with us at the event? And can you tell me more about the event? Yeah, so it's going to be on the ninth uh, street court. Uh -huh. By I am so sorry. I don't need to be. Yeah, um, and then it's going to be from 11 to 3, and it is today about the conversation. Basically, just uh, we're going to have trivia. Okay. Okay. All organizations will be, I mean, all like the three campuses are going to be there. Uh, so there will be, there will be a lot of people. Yeah. So but let's talk some of them. Yeah. I will email you. Yeah. I will email you today. Yeah. Physical movement and things that you offer are so yeah. important for our yeah. students. And then I think that kind of fulfills one of the things that Dr. Simpkins is looking for as far as keeping people on campus and having yes. them be engaged. And so it ticks a lot of boxes. Yeah. So we have about 30 students that work for us in campus recreation. And when community hour came up as a topic or an idea, we surveyed our students saying, like, is this something that you'd be in favor of? And a lot of people were neutral and or students said, well, if I have a break in class, I'll go to my car and sleep. So I was yeah. like, that's, that's not the point of yeah. this break in class. Um, so I think, I think maybe the two of us could also work around what that is supposed to be and how we could appro more appropriately like throw in well-being to that, <laughs> that class schedule. Um, I, I think given that you mentioned your budget, I think I am all up for offering uh, swagging the case. Here, here is like a little challenge. You yeah, know, and we'll do something. That's and we'll, yes, I have Matt that wants to speak to you online. Yeah. Matt. Yeah, sure, most of my point in the chat. Um, I think this would be a great symbiotic relationship, uh, especially with like the PR committee, um, since we had a lot of the tabling and everything like that. Um, I also put my contact information in the chat. Um, I would love to hear from you and invite you to some of our PR committee meetings. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, I'll give you some stats. So we have a campus rec fee. So this is where most of our budget comes from. It's $38.60. At some point, SGA approved it from $25 to $35. And then we had two increases since it became $35, which started back in, I think, fall 17. So it just, re it just increased for the second time this semester to 3865. It was 3680, which is very confusing. Um, what was I getting with that? But um, not everyone pays the fee. So we have 17 and a half thousand students, but only two thirds pay that fee. So even though our fee has been increasing, the amount that we are collecting through fees has been decreasing between enrollment dropping, students moving to online courses only, um, various reasons why our budget is kind of shrinking on top of now AHEC is charging us to use our own building. So anytime that we have open gym or club sports needs to practice, we are being charged to use our own building, which is really yeah. not fun. That's new this year? That's new this semester, yeah. So, so wait, you guys don't, so I thought MSU owned the athletics building. Right? Yeah, and I would love to, if you guys could research more into that. It is a tri-institutional building, so it is an AHEC building, but we're the only ones occupying it. The CCD and UCD are not in that space at all. UCD uses it as our backup commencement space, but other than that, they're never in that building. So that's the other part of where the budget is going is to rent some space, which is really bad. Yeah. Um, 
actually in one of my tri-institutional meetings, I heard that CCD was not able to use the installations anymore of MSU. Um, I was thinking though, since their president was looking into potentially starting a conversation of having CCD students uh, go to MSU installations, there that way you could potentially solve that gap. So, okay, a little bit of history with CCD. When we went to the $35 model, they were still paying four or five dollars a student, where our students were paying $35. Mm -hmm. So we were like, well, we can't have this imbalance. We need to charge your students. And then their student life office said they can Whoa. afford the fee, we'll pay the fee. So we were actually charging their department $70 per student that opted in. So for CCD students, it was free for them because they would just come sign up. I would add a no list and I would charge back to CCD. Mm -hmm. And we were collecting about $50,000 for a couple of semesters doing that or a couple of years over several semesters doing that. But then our old CFO said that's not fair to our students because our students were paying 35 out of pocket. Their students were paying zero out of pocket and they were still getting the services. So we went to a model of all right, we'll still charge them $70 a head, but they have students to pay out of pocket. So our students were paying 35, their students were paying 70 to opt in. And then because we were moving to that direction, that school switched to the YMCA. So they are offering free YMCA memberships because YMCA also comes with daycare. Mm -hmm. So um, they've gone with that model for about two or three years, and now they do want to come back, although I've emailed them several times and I haven't heard from that office. But if you have a connection, I would love to get them back. Yeah, because we're not. Denied. I see. I see that uh, hole you're talking about. This like uh, lack of uh, student engagement or going to a gym or whatever. Yeah. And I was thinking, well, what if we include CCD students to help fill that gap yeah. a little bit potentially, you know, yeah. and start that conversation again? We sell the membership, so like I said, it's thirty-eight sixty for for you guys. If it's a student that doesn't get charged at student tuition, they can pay out of pocket. We have a whole list that we cross check when they come to our front desk. And then the CCD and UCD memberships are actually discounted. So community member off the street, no affiliation to the university is 120. Mm -hmm. CCD and UCD is 80. So we're already giving them a, a deep discount on that membership. This is for term mm -hmm. semester. Okay. So oh. the fall, sorry, I should have clarified. Yeah, okay. In the fall, it's four months. In the spring, it's five months. And then the summer is three months, just so where the delineation falls. Mm -hmm. And then people will be like, well, why am I paying some flat rate for different durations? Which I say it's a three month price. You're getting extra months for free. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, wait, okay. Sorry, in quarters, let me just get that. Yeah. Right. So, um, point of clarification, I guess. And so with the UCD students, they only pay that if they ask to have a membership. Yeah. For us, it comes out of our student fees. So even if we don't use it, we're still paying the 30 Yeah. But that's how all fees at MSU number, they're all yeah. Yeah. forced on you and you can't opt out of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's why I'm trying to get more, more people to do stuff. But if, even if we're not coming into the facility, if they don't like sports or the outdoors or working out, mm -hmm. we still offer opportunities for collaborations, for um, social wellness okay. and things like that. Yeah. There's that stigma where recreation is just working out or sports, and that's not true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we want to break the stigma. We want to get people indoors. We have about 7% of our students have active memberships now, and I realize we're only three weeks in, we'll likely get to 20 to 10%, but if 66% of our students are paying, then I want to get more than 10%. Right. Yeah, so one of the posted events called Break the Stigma, and we just have it based around recreational activities that aren't sports related, so yeah. like doing like wellness things, like we had massage therapists come up to our things for a week, so why don't we do something like that? include something like, I don't know, 10, 15 minute facials. I can get to give myself a charcoal mask for 15 minutes. I'm good. You so you want to put it yeah. in next? Bro, I got like three other events to just me throwing out ideas. <laughs> like, I'm just saying this would be a good idea um, for us to collaborate, to like show students that like they can still actively participate. And then this will show the university that they need to advocate for a space specifically for like recovery and things like that. Because we have all this space to work out and release these endorphins, but then what are we going to do about recovery? Like, we don't have these fancy facilities that have, like, cryotherapy or massage therapists on hands, things like that, like, you know, Harvard, and I'm, I'm not sure Harvard would be the university to talk about, but, like, uh, OU, yeah. I guess. You know? even, even UCD has a sleep pod and a massage chair in there. I'm sorry, they got what? But they also charge a million dollars for their membership. That's true. Well, they got sleep I'm happy yeah. to yeah. also work with you yeah. on, on coming up with an event. Yeah, and be great. You know, I don't, I'd love to talk at another time about something that would really maybe enable 
some of our students since we had such non-traditional student body yeah. like child care. Absolutely. It, to, yeah, to we them. hosted an event on June 10th. I realized it was over the summer, so low attendance because it's summer, mm -hmm. but it was open to all students and their family members. So they were bringing their kids, they were bringing their cousins, they were bringing prospective family members. And it was great. We had hundred students come and like another hundred family members come. And it was a great experience for everybody. We had a student that was older that had two children, I would say six and eight maybe. Mm -hmm. And she was like, that's the first time that they got to run around and be a kid and be in my presence and wow. be school related. So I think we can make that connection of mm -hmm. you're you're not just a college student, right. you're you're these other identifiers. You're part of the family. And you're not just like a parent either. Like you're yeah. just you're more your identity is tied to something more than just one particular thing. Yeah. Also, I have Paul on the stack. I've had him for a while. My bad, Paul. My bad. Sorry, That's Paul. okay. I just, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the, so it isn't opt out, you said. Diana? There's no, yes, there's no opt out. So I'm curious, how do, you, so how do those students who are just online get out of seat? Is it just like they don't get it or is it not? Yeah, for all so students? online only students don't get charged every single fee. So they don't get charged out of fee or athletic. Like there's one other fee that they don't get charged. But because you're an online student, you get charged a different fee that on campus students. Oh. So you actually, if you're a hybrid model, you probably have more fees because you have both, both. on campus fees and online fees. Oh, geez. I didn't know that. Yeah. So I, I appreciate that. I um I got probably paid the fee and put it in that dark box for tuition and student that goes where I don't want. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I also wanted to say um, y'all are doing great work. I saw the I saw the families and stuff on campus over the summer. It looks like it's great. I was at I was a little six-year-old uh, kid with my sister, my twin sister, when we went to the MSU with my mom, when she was a student here. And so oh, I just know that it's, it's an important thing, and it actually builds. Oh, you need to help with it, this. It builds its enrollment. Well, I'm just saying, good work to keep it up. And uh, the <laughs> last thing I want to say, Campus Rec, um, I'm involved with the chess club, too. If y'all ever wanted to expand yeah. into that, we have a very, we have a burgeoning chess scene here on the show. We set up some tournaments and, in uh, there. And fall. I also know that there's a chess team also in the science department as well. Or at CU or what? No, here in our, our science, science our science department. We, but, so here's the thing. We, we advertise all to all faculty, staff, students, and alumni. They're welcome to our club. We've even put some flyers in faculty spaces, but we haven't really been successful. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. I would cool. say there's a lot of crossover between student orgs under the CMEI model and our club team. So the delineation is, even though chess, I, to me, is a sport, until you're competing off campus, then you would come over and be a club sport. But until then, if you're just more of a social organization, then you live in CMEI. So, so here's there's that delineation too. One thing I'll say is we have members participating in tournaments around the city, around the state. It's just we don't we don't have the logistical means to like facilitate it all. You know, as an yeah. official MSU representation, yeah. which would be so cool. Yeah. Wait, it's okay. I'll stop that. I have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I just wanted to say that I would. Love to be included in this. Yay! Yeah. Great job. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can somebody add my email to the chat? Yes. Please. Kenny will. Kenny. Okay, okay. he knows it. Okay. I will. I will have that to add to your email. Yes. Yeah, so if you all have individual thoughts or ideas or even pairing up, I would love to hear. It. Just send me an email. I would love to get the ball rolling on stuff. Uh, I'm very like. Yeah, I do. Um, it's Y. It's called Y E. So my email is D Y E E. The number one. Nice. I think it would be a great conversation starter if we had you for a tri-institutional meet, potentially. Yeah. Just hopefully it could lead somewhere. But because the president, again, brought it up, and that to me says that there are students that want to use yeah. your facilities. So, um, I love that. Awesome. Um, yeah. I just had a quick question. So with like the pool that we have in the rec center, is there any idea? I'd love idea? to talk about the pool. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, so do we. Yeah. So it's an AHEX building. Right. Um, I don't know if you guys knew, like back in 2019, early 2020, we opened up the locker rooms. The school, I don't know how they raised it, but we spent almost $9 million on renovating the locker rooms in a building that's not our building. So we balk at the idea of paying to renovate a building that's not ours. So I think that's why it's kind of stacked. When there was water in the pool, and since they have to correct me, but it was ran by campus recreation. We hired the lifeguards, we did the scheduling, there was varsity swimming and diving. Um, campus Rec offered swim lessons to adults and children. It was open to the community, and it was a great way to bring people off. 
like in the Denver proper on the campus. Mm. But since it's been empty, no one wants to pay to fix it to be back to a pool. So now it's vacant space. It's 10,000 square feet. Campus Rec would love to have that space back. Our, our current footprint is 5,000 square feet for our fitness center. We are already at max capacity. So you see at lunchtime after five o'clock, we are full. Mm -hmm. While I say I want more than 10%, we can't fit more than 10%. Yeah. So I would love for the fitness center to be in the pool space. We could convert the old fitness center into a court space or whatever have you. But the problem is everyone's vying for that space. So I don't know if SGA, if you guys have an idea for that space, but basically everyone is collecting ideas. It's going to James Mejia and strategy and I, I don't know where it's going from there. I don't know where we are with that process, but you guys are a huge voice. So I don't know if you want to put out a survey and see what the students will, but it should be a space that the students want. Yeah. yeah. So I think hearing from the voting students, Teddy and um, he and like as a fellow gym goer as well, we do not like going in there and not being able to like get on equipment, like having to wait 12 to 10 minutes. Yeah. Like you don't have that as a student. Like you yeah. go with there to get your hour workout in and you're pushing yourself you're getting the endorphins that you need to get through the day and then you're going to time whatever it is so it's like having to go in there and make sure what you got it's always the easiest thing so i think that that would be a great thing to advocate for but like i guess the question and then like so i had two parts so one would be why not so this whole breaking the the, the, the stigma around what recreation is why not turn that into a recovery room for students and then maybe like up the fee by like ten dollars or something to like put into that, so it can continue to pay for it. Yeah. And get things like massage chairs, um, a sleep pod. I'm down for sleep pods. I didn't even know that was a thing. Okay. Yeah. Like I'm here for that. Yeah. Um, and That's then of course like aqua like, massage chairs. Yeah, exactly. I know Planet Fitness got them, and I I'd be loving those. Um, that you know just stuff like that, things that we could look into for like recovery. Um, and then also, uh, what would it cost to to make that um. The, the pool area of the day. Yeah. And I would also say it's not just about the cardio equipment or the weight equipment that we want to move into the pool space, but we don't have a dedicated group fitness class. We've been doing group fitness on a basketball court in that little space above the basketball court, in a squash court. I would love if we were to be able to move into the pool space to have a room dedicated for group fitness as well as our club sports. We have one dance studio on campus that we were booted from because academics is taking it over. Their dance program is growing. So now we as Recreation can't use it, but yet we have a dance club and we have a cheerleading club who need space on campus. They're spending so much money off campus to rent at a gym facility when they should have a free space on campus. Right. We also have a growing esports population. We have over 300 students in our club esports. They would love an arena, but that is like the next big thing. It's a multi billion dollar industry. We should have a facility on our campus. Yeah. And it could be a tri institutional facility, but like we should have something. Yeah. We need like a steering committee to kind of go through ideas and then have something to put a proposal in. So, yeah. well, I've heard different proposals over the, about the pool. I know athletics really wants it to just be wood floor, line for all the sports. Mm. Right now, um, baseball, softball, tennis, they come indoors into the current three um, gyms if they have to have weather or something. Um, so they're getting cramped for space too. I know a professor propose that we can do pop-up shops there and I'm like that's not really the best use of space but so there's so many people on campus that are buying for that spot and putting in proposals but really you guys should figure out what the students want and advocate for the students. Okay so maybe like an extensive use of yeah, collaborating with you and getting a survey that we would yeah. best ask the questions or the best interest yeah. part and then the students can then answer them. Yeah that'd be good. And or you guys could also work with strategy and, and James often and see what proposals they're getting. And then you guys take all of those proposals to this. Right. Because I don't want to necessarily touch my agenda, but it should be something. It's going right. to make it for eight years. Exactly. That's a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of things. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I'm talking really fast because I'm maybe back at the volleyball no, good. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I think he's very interested in doing like the three institutions yeah. and the thing. And yeah. then email me. Yes, we will right. talk about. Uh, Breaking Yeah. Okay. We've got a number of people interested. Yeah. In well, I have like five, five, six more minutes. I don't know if anyone else has other thoughts. Um, I just had a quick question. Um, I'm sure you know the answer to. Uh, so, if people have to pay the fee, <laughs> is it broken down by month or is it like a lump sum? It's a lump sum. Yeah, we don't okay. have a payment plan. Is that something that you think is a deterring? I think I think that could be beneficial for CCD students because again, the CCD. Uh, yeah, we could also do a monthly month, 
module too, it's going to be hard for us to keep track of like who still has a payment versus who in fall. Right. But we could probably break that down into a monthly. We just divide it out. Yeah, make it more digestible for yeah. them. Yeah, good idea. Mm -hmm. okay. Sorry, Paul. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Oh, your attention. Um, I was going to say uh, just to the council in general. These are some of the best ideas for use of the pool space that I've heard brought up. And we've had these questions of like, what, what should we do instead? We understand it's like inordinately expensive to repair. Um, that being said, I think in this conversation of uh, talking to James Mejia and this conversation of who's going to get that space on campus, I think we should personally advocate that it goes towards campus. Well, I know that might be a little fast moving based on just what we heard today. But in all honesty, like the just, I'll, I don't need to repeat what has already been said. I, I think it'd be a great idea mentioned. Um, here would be better use than like this current use of storage yeah. space for shelves. Oh, right? so we don't have a lot of like, obviously, people yeah. know this is a student union, but there's no pods of MSU number students no. hanging out here. So we can even have a wing that's just a quiet area or a game area where you don't have to go and work out. It's kind of what um, the wellness building is for CU. Mm -hmm. They have a kitchen, they have a community kitchen. You could lock up your food for the day. There's microwaves, there's laundry facilities. We could do all of that yeah. in that space. Ooh. We could, um, the, the original plan, we actually spent quite a bit of money to look at um, schematics for that space. We were yeah. gonna do a three-story climbing wall through the deep end yeah. and then layer it so that there was a second store, oh. second story and a first story. So it's at, even though it's 10,000 square feet, we could get more square footage if we deck it out. Yes, so we definitely have opportunities to put a lot of stuff in there for wellness. I wouldn't even say just campus recreation, but for wellness opportunities. Yeah. So can I say really quickly that I just want to find, do we have general unity on this question of like yes. advocating for the use of this space? Yes, of course. Yes. 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 I'm going to put that as like yes. a whole. Yes. 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 I'm agree. Agree. yes, wellness in general, yes, we yeah. will make this a goal okay. for sure. I think a, a possible next step is calling in this chief strategy officer, James Mejia. Um, I have his email. I think we can call him in and, and advocate these needs because these are some of the, I agree 100% with Paul, these are some of the best ideas I have heard to be used at that space yeah. in like the few years I've been here. And if it's just in there vacant, I think we could absolutely like, hey, camp, give it to campus rec and, and, and turn it into a wellness center or even what we you're describing. Can give it its own entryway? Yeah, absolutely. So I think 100% we can do that. That's the other problem with our building. It's so wide open. Obviously, the building is now that it's on lockdown, but that makes it harder. If we're supposed to offer public um, memberships or day passes, and the building's locked down, now we're turning people away. If we had our own entrance, then that'd absolutely. Be yeah. Yes, we will. We will then contact the chief strategy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, Okay, um, guys, I do need a potty break. Can I just do <laughs> it? Ah, now it's okay. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> I've been done. I'll tell you. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Oh, I thought about it back in my head. I'm like, are you here till the end? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a long, long time to hang. Oh, thank you for this. Uh, it's a speaker yeah. camera thing. Oh, did you not give it? Oh, uh, friends of ours. Whoever brought it is great. Uh, oh, okay. I think 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 yeah, no, we are
Not relevant to the current meeting. What? What is your question? Sir, who's specifically in charge of the wet student lounge in JSSB? Hey. Uh, oh, we, we will ask that to the chief of strategy because he probably knows. Wait, student lounge. Which one's the student lounge? You mean the one? Wait, do you mean the one that's over by uh, the financial aid office or? <laughs> yes. I mean, I don't think that there's like really anybody. Oh, oh wait, are you talking about the one that's um, like it's a it's it's in its own little area, like not when you enter the JSSB, but it's off to like the little side right there. I don't know how to, I don't know how to explain it, but it's not. Yeah, it's probably so like there's like a weird egg chair. Uh, take a seat. Yeah, I've been inquiring about that. Can okay. Can we figure this outside the meeting? Let's talk. Okay, let's talk Constitution Day. Yes. Okay. Ready. I handed out my uh, bill, a physical copy. If you do not have it, it is posted online in Teams. And with that uh, bill, there's a, a budget that I made as well for transparency reasons. But uh, as you guys are aware, um, Senna brought up that we have to run some form of Constitution Day activity. And so basically I just drafted up the bill and it, with that bill, I'm opening discuss, discussion up, excuse me, for that nice. uh, day. Let's see, let me pull it up. Um, All righty, so I'll just read it. Yeah, he has a parliamentary motion. I just want to suggest that we maybe um, read the therefores and the budget uh, the budget as it's laid out. The whereas is we sent this out a couple days ago. Yeah. And I think we've all had a lot of time to review it. Yeah. Pretty hard normal. The only thing that now reaches in there. I think it'd be good with our time. Yes. Focus on the I, and then focus on the budget. I just want to throw that there. Yes, that's definitely down. If anyone disagrees, please let me know. Say read the abstract as well first. Okay. So that's like, well, okay. Yes. All righty. Okay. Everyone's good with that? Yeah. Awesome. All right. Abstract. Approved by funding amount of $1,000, tabling duties, and location for Constitution Day on September 18th, 2023. The Dustin amount would be utilized for applying game props, school supplies, gift cards for prices, speakers, and microphones. And then, therefore, right? Yeah. Therefore, be it further resolved. Therefore, excuse me, I request that a set allocated amount of a thousand dollars be approved to support this resolution and further ABEC events that support voter engagement and civic engagement for students at MSU Denver through a vote of the council. Okay. Okay. They're the ones that brought up Senate, like Landon Howe pretty much there. Okay. Us the Let's begin a stack. I have Naomi. Anybody else? Go ahead. Oh wait, well, my Naomi and then Mike. So I have just like a couple things. So with the outdoor spiking, I thought um, I thought our rec center had one. So I think instead of buying it, we should just ask them if we can rent it. Um, if they have it, if they don't have it, then by all means, I support we just buy it. Um, yeah. Or if like we can't reserve it, if we can't reserve it, because then I see the point of having it. Um, but yeah, yeah, I would just ask them first before we spend the sixty five dollars. Um, and then student engagement, when we have like the subway gift card, I'm assuming would be for student engagement because we're getting raffle tickets. Mm -hmm. So I would assume instead of maybe like a subway gift card, because I get it, that's getting students like food right away on campus. But I'm thinking like maybe we could do something more. I mean, we have a, like he was saying, like a nine thousand dollar overflow budget. Right. So why don't we get something that's going to be more beneficial to our students, like do a raffle for like like we did. We were talking about last year, like Costco's got a sale right now on like the basic version of a laptop. You can get it for like five hundred dollars um or like some beats headphones or something like something that like actually gets students involved because they're gonna be like oh a gift card cool but like oh i could win some beats like let me let me pull up to this you advertise that students are gonna pull up or like a 50 dollar gift card to the student store or whatever or like buy a hoodie from them or something and you know be able to advertise that as well i just think that like that's not gonna get students to be like let me come participate you know what i mean because i look at a gift card and i'm like I have the same like five gift cards in my phone that I haven't used for like the past six months that I probably should get. But um, just just an idea. I'm not saying that like I'm not approving that. I'm just saying I think that we could do more. So I would even be willing to motion that as a friendly amendment, add on like another 
like $500 to add towards like incentive packages for student engagement. Um, and then you could come up with that on your own and we can just give you our better judgment. You're going to find stuff that will get students more involved. Okay. Um, yeah, there's only one issue with that. I direct comment, I mean, direct response, and then you will. Yeah, Thank you. Uh, this event is coming up soon. So the sooner the better that we approve this. I'm, I'm willing to change things, but again, we, I think we need to start moving the ball on this and yeah. plan it out and buy the things and, that's and all that. Which we'll, but that's a great idea. I definitely thought about yeah. purchasing more uh, things that would attract students more. Like Beats, I actually thought about that myself. Yeah. There was a concern raised to me about potential of the bill being vetoed or the budget being vetoed. By who? He's talking about the budget we just passed. Like the budget. Oh, gotcha. You budget. Well, I mean, I'm all for it. What? But... Uh, that's that's it. I think you raised some really good points. All right, and there are so like things really you should think about for the future. And I want to say that because I think there's a lot we need to iron out with your ideas because there's a lot of different right. ideas there. You should just like organize so we can all proceed on the same page. I think Will's put together some really good like. Um, stuff in this in this budget. I, I think that this for an about for a thousand dollars event, it's going to go pretty far, which would be cool. We'll see how an event like this goes. Maybe we find out that yeah, yeah we should have definitely put in more. Um, but I think I, I think we should proceed with this as it is. And you and I should workshop with a lot of the other um, events that we have coming up. We're going to be publishing to people that I give you about. Mm -hmm. That way, when we come to the table with it, we'll have some clear stuff like like Will's provided here, and we can have something. Because part of me is like. Yeah, I support what you're saying, but I don't know if we would like raise to a vote what I'm really voting for. So just some clarity on the, on the suggestion more than anything. We're gonna we have two, uh, three minutes left. Can I have you speak? Okay. I'll be so a few things. Um, because we just passed our budgets, little clarification. Um, and as you're approving of this event, as is um, Matt, it will go to Matt's committee. The PR committee um, has the voting power over the budget to get more things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, my suggestion is just add it to the Bring it to the committee, and they can they can increase this as much as they'd like um, for that. So if you add, that's I think that's an easy fix there. Also, I would recommend since this is an event and you two are the sustainability chairs, maybe we can commit how we make the event sustainable. Maybe right. That's an idea I can just. Put out I there. definitely love your idea, and I definitely thought of it. I'm, I have I have in the second, then I have three. So I just sure. wanted to add. Um, I definitely don't think that we should do any electronics. I think the gift cards are good, just because considering a lot of students here. Um, and you know, food is pretty expensive. And it's one thing a lot of students try to find a lot of free food. So, and try to make it more accessible to more students. I was thinking maybe getting like four twenty-five dollar gift cards just so we could have a wider variety of students getting something rather than just two out of the whole um, yeah. pot. So yeah, um, I, I'm okay with the subway gift cards. So. A direct response to that though is that I would encourage us to only spend it on the cafeteria people mm -hmm. downstairs exactly. because if we do that. And I don't know how much of our population is from Palestine, but I know that like it would not look good on us. And I don't think me personally, morally, I try my best not to support Starbucks because they do support the war on Palestine right now by funding the Israeli army, which many other people do as well. But that doesn't look good when we contribute to companies that do that to an institution that serves students of that background as well. So just something okay. to consider when we're doing that. Thank you Sounds for that. Good. Um, I don't know. Okay. Um, but again, the reason, Yes. I have, oh, I have right up. Just quickly, I wanted to ask you, are the other universities putting funds toward things like this too and prizes and or is this just us? I talked to them. CU Denver did it really disclose. You're dragging them along, right? Yes, pretty okay. much. I'm the guy <laughs> like, <laughs> like let's okay. do this, let's do this. And well, like, good for you for organizing this. And I like um y'all had said about the amount of money, as Alejandro had said. You know, if we could get a little bit more and do some more, maybe some pie stuff, things like that to support these businesses, but also help the students have more to eat. I like it. Awesome. Do we uh, do we still have our share meals, our, our share meals app thingy on campus? I think, I think so. Yeah. We, yes. need, we need to advertise that a lot more. Can I say something before? Yes, you have 45 seconds. Okay. <laughs> so real quick. A lot of yes, John. Oh, I'm so. Sorry. I have not seen nothing post. I have. I've been getting. Really? Yeah. Emotion. Can you Okay, that's okay. That. You have Thank a minute, you. Will. Thank you, guys. Um, real quick, uh, for clarity reasons, a lot of the stuff that I'm the reason why I put those things, like the speakers and the rooms, I love being able.
able to depend on other departments, but I also want us to become self-sufficient and not to not have to depend on other departments in case, for example, they're planning the event, we're planning on the same day, we can't get their stuff. So, um, for example, the speakers themselves are big and would be harder to like steal. That's why I bought the like bigger ones mm -hmm. because like anyone can just potentially right walk into our office, grab the small speaker, put it in our backpack, and then it's a whole problem. It'd be different. We bought these bigger ones that we could just put in the uh, storage room. Storage room. Thank you. And yeah. I love your idea. And we can increase the budget, like Mike is saying, for this event. And again, like Paul was saying. For future events, this would be like our first event for tabling after Welcome Week, and we can just see how it goes from there. Mm -hmm. move on. Okay. Nice That's it. Anybody else? Yeah. Beautiful. I motion we vote for this. Yeah. I second it. Beautiful. Uh, we start with Naomi. I'm going to start with you this time. Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Matt. Hey, that can resolution. Oh, wait, wait. Did, did, anyone, did anyone take into consideration of that before we move we'll be forward? able to do? Yeah, that's what the generic Visa cards, that's what our, he was saying as well. Oh, you just get like $25, like regular uh, gift cards so yeah. students have access to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's it. Sorry, I was like, it's, like, it's, it's, PR, it's the PR committee's job now. So yeah. Cool. yeah, now that PR, PR, be ready. It passes. There's a lot coming your way. I'm ready. Okay. Yeah. Um, Alvin did make a, a motion to uh, split the two into four with $25 each, and I seconded it. We didn't really consider the motion. Uh, I think we should do that. I thought Are it was just there? a suggestion, but yeah, I mean, like. Sister. I yeah. just suggested it. Is that a suggestion willing to accept in a friendly amendment? Well, potentially. Okay. I think we all just voted on it. That's yeah, that's already. That's 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 yeah. Well, maybe a motion that we reconsider that particular aspect of the thing we just voted on. Okay. okay. I'm going to interject real quick. Um, because it could be an amendment, like everything else can be bought. And then after that, we still have three days. If you can figure it out with him before Friday, then we button the amendment by Friday. And then those gift cards get purchased that morning of the Monday that we need. Yeah, I guess the point of my interjection here is to say we, we should have considered that before we vote. This um, will be more important next time. Okay, I don't think that this is that big of an issue. I vote yeah. that we just yeah. get the four. Yep. Let's just get the four because then we support more students. And there we go. It's the Good. PR committee's. And it's the same amount of money. Yeah, for okay. it's the PR committee's job now. So I'd suggest just talk to the PR them. committee. Yeah. The reason I bring it up is because if any, if any member makes a motion and in the second day, we all have the right to see that motion heard out, right? Yeah. We all agree with that. Did yes. Or was it just a, I, I just suggested. He just suggested. You didn't make a motion, right? I heard the motion. Oh, but I'm not going to be a stick about it. Okay. okay. Anyway, are we are we good? Awesome. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we set up another resolution. Look at us. Okay. I am also going to make a, a motion to pass the uh, fall feast next, and then leave the DC. Sure. Just because it's also money. Yeah. So do Is you that, want to so move that along in the agenda? Yeah, I'm. And then the so move item five to be the next uh yep. topic of business. Yep. I'm I'm motioning. Okay. Second. Thank Give you. Me an email, We're gonna bring up the spreadsheet. I don't have a that, but do you want me to speak on it? Then you want to go ahead. Okay. So as Kenny will bring this up, this is for Fall Fest, which is in two weeks. Um Denny and I got together and we kind of thought we kind of Fall Fest we don't really do anything. We student government, we kind of just, we, I think we gave out school supplies last year actually, but we've already done that convocation. Thank you. So we had a different idea this year. We're like, okay, let's give out something to eat. And an easy kind of thing we thought of was like like uh, watermelon kebabs sort of thing. So um, what this is, is kind of a itemized budget of what that would look like. I'm going zoom in a little bit. Okay, my eyes are really bad. But um, it's basically watermelon. It's getting chamoy. It's getting miguelito. Um, it's just stuff to put on the watermelon. Um, and what we would do is the, the night before um, Fall Fest, we'll have a Putting of the watermelons party in the office. Uh, we'll start all in the fridge. That and is then, our bonding time. Yes, yeah, it's our team bonding time. And um, what we'll do is do that and we'll just serve some watermelon kebabs the next day. So. Some tahini, right? Some tahini. Yeah. Well, we can get, I'm going to have to buy this any watermelon. That shit ain't going to last if yeah. I'm there. And I'm um, just putting it out there. We're buying like 108 watermelons. Just, just, we'll that should be about. We're buying 108 watermelons. That's what that says. Yeah. yeah. Because if you get like the yield for like five, 
five kebabs for them. So oh, um, how much is it though? Like, it's like seven hundred bucks. Seven hundred bucks. Yeah, so we're talking about this small. Okay, okay, okay. So, okay. There, yes. There's controversy. Hold on. Yes. Let, let, me, let me let me let me let me finish. So um, each watermelon is seven dollars each. That's why. So. Oh, and, the, the, and they're out of more or less getting out of season. So that too as well. So we need, that's why we need to do this quickly. Right. Um, the budget is like a little more than a thousand dollars for this. That's a little bad. less. A little less. Sorry, I, I, I that's have it. Sorry. So it's not that much money. So um, honestly, like that's sorry. I feel like that's really good because yeah. like that's gonna get students way more incentive because like they have like other students going around like um uh, like the Greeks and stuff. They have their um yes like their drinks and their presents, but that. you've got to buy it. This is gonna be for free, so people are gonna come to us way more, which means we're gonna get rid of that way fa like way faster. Way and domestic. even if we don't get rid of it faster, like now we can give out those watermelons to our community members here at oh, MSU Denver. Yeah. Or we can donate it to the food hub. And I think that that's a really good investment. Um, either way, we're not wasting our money here. Okay, so I am about good. to start my seven minutes before we keep going. Yeah, I have yeah. all on the stack, and then yes. I have Alejandro. Yeah. I think we should need to seriously consider some cutting gloves, uh, a couple pairs maybe, for the cutting of the melons. Oh. Uh, I would hate to see our costs made. Di great. Direct. Yeah. You said gloves? Like cutting gloves. Oh. Yeah, so okay. like that's my loads, yes. Because I mean, some I think of us have been at, some of us have been food service. We're going to do fine. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. Okay. Those of us who have not, man, I don't want to lose a finger and that be on the cost or the liability of this thing. Because mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're amateurs, not professionals. Sounds Cutting good. up 107 more. No one's mine. Let's, yes, let's divide it. You might do 10. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm kidding. I think I'm we can get two or three pairs of the gloves. Sounds good. We can have a nice safe. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, the boards are on the budget. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah, we have boards. Now, put something on the chat. Matt, do we have access to appropriate tonight for this? Oh, yeah. That is something else. I have three knives. Oh, I'm two. willing. I have and two. then, so we have five knives. If anybody else would like to bring their own knife to the cutting party, that would what be great. Party. It's yeah. going to be the night before, the probably night. from like five to seven, probably okay. the, the, the day before. I will put out an invitation currently. Yes. Yeah, and then we could probably use the most cultural lounge as a better space. Let's see and see me out. Okay. I have. <laughs> Point of order, please. I have uh, I have Alejandro on the stack. And do you want to? Yeah. Go ahead. I'll go ahead, Alejandro. I just wanted to say that we should make sure that we um pay attention to AHEX guidelines oh, yes. as well because you know considering that we have like sold and given out in the past, um they are requiring that we have it pre-packaged before we hand it out to the students so they can't just be out in the open on the clubs like that. It has to be packaged the wow. night before. So like because. vacuum sealed or and not necessarily oh, vacuum sealed, but like. Like I don't, I don't know if like some of y'all have seen um this past semester we did like um Valentine snacks and we had to like wrap it in saran wrap just to make sure that it's packaged. Okay. So just as long as it there's a form of like packaging to um avoid yeah. any. The kind dollar of, store like, has those plastic bags. Yeah. And as long as we refrigerate them and stick them the skewers in a plastic bag, that might work. Hey. I hate this idea. Let me Is let me not? let me do a direct response. I hate this idea because it's not sustainable. I'd rather not put like strain wrap on them. That's like the obvious wait, answer, but like that's just wait, wait, does it have to be so like point of clarification? Does it have to be saran wrap like when you give it to them? Or uh, it doesn't have to be saran wrap. It just has to be packaged. Okay, What's the oh, okay. Yeah. I have a compromise What's and this? let's make this more uh let's instead of doing the sticks, then we do paper cups. Oh. And with a lid. And love they, it, love it. Yeah, and wait, then that's it. And then that's it. Cups, love yes, it. exactly. Yeah. Do it. And then we'll do paper cups. They are uh, so like they are this uh biodegradable. Yes? yes. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Yeah. I have I have Paul on the stack. Can you walk for Paul? Uh, my needle spoons or something, if that's the case. Look, look, look. Well, then we can use the skewers for that. We give them a skewer and cool. then she can poke. Ah, genius. Like modes of melon we need to consider. Yes. Thank you. Do you have a Okay, so, um, <laughs> Dr. Brown goes and then Gabe. So, I just wanted to ask about logistics on how are you all planning on purchasing 108 watermelons and from where? And <laughs> and that's going to be that we are so, to yes, so we called Sam's Club, oh. which is our, yeah, I, um, and uh, we, we have a truck, right? Yes. <laughs> and uh, Denny, Denny's. Uh, or I will do multiple trips. I have my chief for. You're going to buy five, five more days. So I, I have a friend and he owns his own like media company. So he has a truck where he moves all like his media equipment. I'm talking about like a whole stage. Okay. So he has this very big truck okay. that I will have access to. Okay. And then um, 
I will get a hundred melons and you be I was saying, <laughs> it'll be I cross the border. I don't give a damn about the water. <laughs> <laughs> I am not afraid. <laughs> My, my question more for like logistical reasons, yes. but also want to make sure that it is not just Denny. No, 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 no. Like yes. It's not fair. Yes, I agree with you, this. You know, we got to make sure that we're supporting one another. So, that's not what yeah. two people do. Eat General time. agreement, then if like there's 108 melons outside and y'all are in the building, are y'all going to help us out? Just to yeah. plan yeah. this trip. Yes, let's plan the melon yes. trip outside of here. Thank you for yeah. your support. That's all. I'm <laughs> all I'm saying is, I will get, but like, I appreciate you and I love you. I have a will in the stack. And then Matt, oh, and then Matt, I'm just sorry. Matt says that he agrees with safety wear. We will get some safety wear. Yes. Safety wear for what? Cutting watermelons? Yeah. They're cutting gloves, girl. It's, we just talked about it. It's not good. I think Matt. Matt. Oh, Matt, I'm so sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. That's not the household I grew up in. That's my bad. Same. Same. <laughs> You know, just going to bring up a slightly different idea than the paper cups. Um, I don't think I have enough for like the whole event, but I have a couple like giant reusable, um, like top giant Tupperwares. If we can get some of those and be able to just take them out bit by bit, so then we can also keep a good chunk extra like cold. So, oh, I like that. But but the thing is, we have to give the food package to the students. Well, like yeah. They have to have individual portions. Yeah, so that's what we'll do. So they'll come up, we'll give them an individual portion in the cup. It'll be sealed, and then they can get their, we'll give it to them, and then they can take off the cup and get whatever seasoning the things they want. So technically, we are giving it to them sealed. Yes. Ah, I like this. I love workarounds. So. Okay, I'm let's do that. Clarify then. Okay. Um, because that sounds like we still want to do the paper cups instead of what I threw out there, which is fine. I just want to clarify. I think, can you bring those to the meeting? I mean, to the office just so we can see them and then we'll, we'll think of logistics. All right. But so far, I, I, think right now important, I think right now the important thing okay. is the budget, how much we're spending, and the we all, all agree right. that you really want to help me get these watermelons into the building. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is the important part. Yes? Okay. Um, anybody else have any questions? Oh, Will, I'm sorry, Will. Oh, well, go. Does anyone have anything? I motion we vote on this. Yes. No. Okay, so Gabe's next. I have 30 seconds, my friend. Oh, yeah. He's okay. Oh, you can get it. Do you want to? Okay, we're good. Yes. I have a very technical. If I'm on a day where it's packed and you, I don't know the number to come that day, I'm not going to be able to. I will get to it. But I can work it in my schedule. I have John in the stack. This is another question that Matt typed up in the. He said that um, who's in charge of the first floor GSSB? He's never seen it used, and who's in the corner room leading up to the entrance? Oh, yeah, we, we because we're gonna try to contact the same person, uh, the chief of strategy, and then we'll try to get an answer because we also don't know. Nobody knows. Okay. Um, I would like Sharon Lawrence. Okay. Sharon Lawrence. Sharon Lawrence is the director of facilities, okay. but she helps oversee the building JSSB. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Mm -hmm. I motion. Well, Kristen has something to say. I'm going to add one more minute. Just I was just seconding the motion. Together. Let's vote on watermelons, people. <laughs> <laughs> this is the whole uh, resolution, right? Yes, well, we're running over the yes. whole resolution. It's, yeah, basically, it's agreeing to the events and the budget. Yeah. Budget set forward, but the PR of committee can give. Yes. So yes, yes, yes. Let's vote. Okay. Let's vote. Uh, yes. It was three. Let's, Kristen. Uh, let's start with you. Oh, we're voting. Aye. 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 Hey, number three. <laughs> um. <laughs> Good job. Okay. Hey, and then we can get to our last item. Okay. Let's talk about new uh, DC, please. I'd, I'd like to start with first identifying who can't go to this, who's interested. Well, why you uh, take it? Oh, the, the, <laughs> the student government uh, trip to DC, October 5th to 8th. 5th to 8th. Yes, for SGAs as a leadership training event. I, so, I just want to clarify some things. Yes. If you already have, a, uh, if the school has already provided you once this year or is going to provide you once this year with a travel budget, you only get one. So if you're already using your one, 
I know some of us are planning to go to Target. Maybe I don't know. That's a part of the story. Oh, wait. And then... Wait, don't, don't we have a leadership development project? Yes, we can. Yes, we can use this. Oh, okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, see again, CU Denver brought this to my attention. They're going to this trip for SGAs throughout the whole nation. And I think it'd be a good opportunity for some of these counts or any of these counselors to go to this, you know, experience DC, experience new training. Can you get on the big screen for Kristen for us today? How do I do that? Yeah. Email it to Kevin. Send a link on the team chat. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. I just need to look at everyone. Yes, I'll, I'll send the link, but basically October 5th to 8th is when it's going to be happening. So that's from Thursday to Sunday. You'll come back Sunday. So you'll leave Thursday and come back Sunday. Fly in there? Yes, you would be flying there, John. <laughs> yes, Paul. That's like what our content in the direction or purpose of the thing. <laughs> of the, the, the event. The event yeah. is to train uh, SGA members how to run a government properly. Who's training? Let's see. American Student Government Association. No, okay. I don't I need to bring all these hard hitting questions. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> are we discussing that? Um, we'll um, I, I okay, okay. I want to start with seven minutes of discussion and go. Okay. Uh, Who's on the staff call? Uh, sure, I think what else? Uh, I talk a lot, so if you would, somebody wants yeah, to go, talk, sure. go for it. I just got a quick, like, couple questions. So, we would be alone be funding it, and how many students can we fund to go from our our leadership team? Here? It's um, it's yeah, it's up to us. It's as many as we can, but I want to recommend that eight of us stay because that way we can still run business. Right, right. Yes. So four, I'm four staying. people. Mainly, I want to go so I can like look at how indigenous which. I am not going to rely on this, but I want to see how other indigenous students in student government are being able to process and handle things within a governmental setting in their institutions and see how their policies and things are being ran so I can take this back and run that by my community members as well. So I would love to go if you all would be supportive of that. And if not, then don't make me put up a fight, please. Okay. We're in discussion. Okay. okay. Yes. You have a comment or you're just telling us do you want to go? I want to go. Who wants to go? Who wants to go? Just can go. Who can go? Let's first you get that. This is can, not want. No, this is this is, this is can. can. This, is, this is a can. Like, are you sure that we that you are going to come into this? I don't want to. Then, okay, well then they then, don't. Then, they don't. Why I'm asking for clarification. Come I'm not on. trying to be a smart ass. <laughs> <laughs> can and <laughs> wants to go. Right? Who can and wants to go? Okay, I have Naomi. You want to go, right? Yes, can and wants. Can and, and then wants. Gabe. And Gabe. John. John. We have a five thousand dollar budget. I don't think it's unlimited for four people to be able to go. That's I, not yeah. a lot of money. I think he's just saying so. That's we can what's in the eye, though. Right? Yeah. 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 So so I think our budget do you now want is four thousand dollars for four people. I don't want to go, but I <laughs> put you on the thing. You want to? So let's start this discussion. Wait, that, yes, this is, I have Doctor River on, and then I have Gabe, and then I have. Yes, I've spoken a lot my friends. Well, yeah, and then you. So my question is, um, a lot of times when you travel, you need an advisor or someone to go with you from the university. Um, oh, yes. If you're, especially if you're applying for student travel, it's not absolutely required, but it is. Um, it it is something you know. It is a thing um, for liability. And so I just wanted to offer that 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 takes time, and it's September eighth, I think. So this is in like less than a month. So right. just in terms of time sensitivity, I think you all need to like be realistic. Yeah. The other thing, and I hate to be the Debbie Downer, but I'm just like putting it out there because these things take a while to plan. I'm going to DC on October 5th and my flight was $900. Or Thanks. wait, Damn. September 28th, 29th. And I just reserved my flight last week and it was $900. So I'm just letting you all know DC is super expensive. My hotel is five hundred dollars a night. A night? I'm only staying one yes. night. Yes. Okay. How do we feel about Airbnb? Yeah. So I'm just like we'll I'm putting it out there, there that yes, she is right. super yeah. expensive, and I I think unless you have a budget that you've already done the research and figured it out on yeah. how much things are going to cost, I just really think you'll need that information and before you start committing things. Yes. Um, right. because I can tell you, just see, it's super expensive, and those were just those two things. So okay. that's all I wanted to come and say. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Um, before I'm just gonna make a quick comment. Um, if it doesn't get passed, then let's 
bring a budget next week with yeah. like what needs to be done. Okay, mm -hmm. and then I have. Uh, you can Airbnb instead of a hotel. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk logistics. That's what I'm telling him. He needs to come prepare with that next meeting. Go ahead. Yeah, I think okay. I think yeah, I definitely agree with what Dr. Barone said about logistics and all that fun stuff. Um, because it, is there like a registration fee for the continent as well? You know, looking into all all the aspects of it. Right. So I think it, it was great to bring this up so that people can start yeah. you know thinking about it and stuff. And I think if we can just have like a little spreadsheet or something with like how much what the projected cost could be um, mm -hmm. for next week. So then we could vote on that. That would be great. That's possible. No um, and lastly, I, I don't think, just in case we do go to this and we decide to go to this and all that fun stuff, I don't think you should just limit it to four people. I don't understand the notion of like, oh, we need eight people. But technically speaking, we can still run a meeting to kind of vote on things. So that's always like a good like side way on that. We can also vote on things via the team's cap. Um, and we can also like tune in, you know, via teams or something right. and meet it during that time. So I don't think we should really limit it, but I think instead we should just keep it like kind of like keep it on the radar type of thing um, in case people still want to go. And just in case it's not approved by like student government funds, we you, you, you all could probably still attend through like travel funds. Yes. So that's always, I think, still potentially an option. Um, so I said one more thing. I forgot. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. Ali? Oh, I'm so I have a direct response to what Dave just said. Yes, we have travel funds, but in order to access to the travel fund, you have to submit your proposals mm -hmm. at least a month or two months before the actual. There's no time. Okay. There's no time. Okay. No time. Yeah. okay. Let's, okay, come on. I have a little quick. Thank so, you. Um, after we check the budget, we have $5,000 in leadership development. Considering we have two semesters, I wanted to break it down to $2,500 per semester. Um, if we are considering on going, um, keep in mind that we're going to only have 2500 to spend this semester because in case there's potential for another conference next semester for other people to attend. Well, okay. okay, thank you, Ali. And then I have Paul and then I have Rick, and then you can go up. I wanted to tell you that I was looking at this conference online just now, and I'd like you to know that you're expected to wear business wear on Thursday and Friday here. So that suits, not just you know, whatever. And these 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 groups that attend this, they the students are leading workshops and roundtables. Their advisors definitely are attending because there's sessions for advisors here in this. Um, and they're, I mean, every day is packed with um, roundtables and workshops for this. And I, I feel that for something like this, these student governments have plan well in advance. Yes. It's not just show up and learn. You've got to contribute to this and, and be organized and have, you know, your gear, your paraphernalia, you trade, you it seems like a really big deal, is yes. what I'm saying. And yes. if we go in kind of half ass, I don't know how that's going to look for us. And, and I don't know do we have a like a, an idea how much this is these are fees. These are always fees for this. Yeah. So let's have a budget and then we'll 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 see if we can do something. I have I have Paul, and then I have Naomi, and then I'm about to run out of time, so I'm going to give you two more minutes. Sure. I'm making a motion, so they'll bring it for a second. Okay. okay. Um, I really don't have much room uh, about <coughs> other people going to DC for this. Um, I do think that there are some questions about fees we should be raising. Um, mm -hmm. I'm happy to be one of the eight people that stays. I have no interest in going to Washington, DC. I think that's the worst place to go to learn how to represent a constituency. We're talking about the swamp of the United States that routinely refuses to move on the issues that the American people support. So that's why I would not personally go on a trip like this. Um, I think that we get a lot more good out of visiting our state legislature to do a better job of representing their constituency and to be a lot cheaper. Just a thought. But um, I, again, don't really hold that strong of an opinion about other people attending this if they want to no. or you feel strongly yeah. about it. I think just the fact that you got to wear suits while we're there, you got to, I mean, how much do you want us to act like U.S. Congress? Are we also going to stop doing anything? Okay, well, let's so that's you. basically that's all I have. Naomi? Yes. Naomi, yeah. So a couple of good points were also brought up. I do see that. And I'm not here to like support the colonialist government, don't get me wrong, but like to dismantle this type of, I guess, governing system, you need to infiltrate it, understand it, and dismantle it from the inside out. That's just how it works. You need to understand how it works from the inside out, period. So this is an opportunity for us to learn that. However, Marie did bring up a very good point that it is $569 per person from now till September 22nd for us to get registered. So four of us go, that's another, what, one, two, three, 
two, like two, like two grand, two twenty five hundred dollars that we gotta also. So there goes our twenty six hundred. So the other thing is that since we can't go to student travel for this, how dedicated would these four people be willing to go and fundraise outside of the university? We would have to go and either talk to other small businesses to get donations to get us to go. Um, or also with these types of things, I know when I went to ABS, they had a scholarship for us um, that you could apply to get. Um, and that was $1,000, so that was cool. Um, so this, I think, is a great idea. The feasibility of it is up for questionings, but I'm one of those people who I'm like, I don't care. Like, I'll figure it out. If it's going to get us free travel, like, I'm going to pull up. So okay, that's also an option. Hmm. Do you have a motion? I do, but I have a comment as well. I'll make it quick. quick. It's three comments. A, um, so I'll be quick. there should be no reason why we can't go to like, the president's office or Will Simpkins and be like, hey, I, I feel like this would be up his alley and this would be something like he would yeah. donate to. Second one, um, I'd rather not use all the budget like that because yeah. I also want to do like team bonding things. I want to go to yeah. events, um, this, yeah. stuff like that. Three, I motion to table this next week so we get more information. Deal. Thank Thank you. Second. Okay, I'm going to get for the week. Yeah. Wait, the bell and the motion. Oh, we have to vote. Sorry, I'm still getting used to it. Let's quick point on the word. My vote. Promise. We should vote by does anyone disagree? And then we can. Beautiful. Okay. Does anyone agree to table? I mean, does anyone disagree to more to table this until next week where we have more information? Anybody abstains? Anybody agrees? Yeah. Yes, I agree. Are we agreeing? That was okay. 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 We voted. We're tabling it. A motion to adjourn the meeting. Seconded. Second that. All in favor, say aye. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any, anybody who disagree? Any abstain? Thank you, Danny. Thank you all. What does that mean? What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>